Greetings, M-Words, and welcome to the Maggot Has Nothing Better To Do show. We're having another call-in pain day, which means we take the time to listen to you, our fans, for just as long as it takes for your words to fill us with rage, and then we consign you to unrelenting agony. Hello, caller, you're on the Maggot Show. Uh, hi, Maggot. Uh, I'm Tom Bransford, a, a long-time Democrat. I, I was wondering what you thought about the recent presidential election. Um, as far as I know, the election isn't for another year and a half. No, I, I mean the American election. Oh, you mean the mindless shit-slinging contest that determines who holds the title of Supreme Snarf Hawker? Uh, yeah. Frankly, I think the Earthians deserve pretty much everything they do to themselves. Which I guess isn't as much as you'd think, considering 75% of their population is mindless automatons built by the Narksplosh. I thought that was just a rumor. You only wish. But the human resistance loves elections. According to their statistics, anyone who votes a so-called straight party ticket is 98% likely to be an automaton, meaning they've got a whole fresh list of targets. So if you voted that way, you might want to bar up your windows before they sneak into your room and reprogram you to turn against your masters. Hey, now that's just not fair. Though I guess you did say that it's only 98%, so if you're in that minority 2%, they acknowledge that you made your decision based on the real issues? No, it's just that that's the percentage that correlates with the number of real humans that cooperate willingly with the Narksplosh. And the Resistance doesn't reprogram them, they just get assassinated. So for your own sake, you'd best just accept that you're an automaton. After all, the first step to recovery is admitting you have a problem. Next caller, you're on the Maggot Show. Hey, is this Roadkill's Discount Pizzeria and Corpse Disposal Warehouse? No, you living proof as to the failure of the universe to evolve. This is the Maggot Show. Oh, well, you guys know where I can get a pizza with extra skin, right? Yes, and that would be Roadkill's Discount Pizzeria and Corpse Disposal Warehouse, which we are not. Oh, yeah, I hit the wrong speed dial. This is my roommate's phone. He's one of those gas pork worshippers. He calls you guys, like, every day. Hey, are you talking to Roadkill's Pizza? Give me the phone! Attention, you heathenistic pile of incompetent man filth! I ordered two pizzas with extra cheese and hear me, baloney, but I specifically said no sausage! But I found a big chunk underneath the cheese, and it still had a testicle attached. It's hard enough to maintain domineering control over my flock of fellow enlightened followers of gas pork without having to weather a relentless storm of jokes regarding a perceived tendency on my part to eat dick. If you send me one more pizza with toppings I didn't order, Gas Pork is going to take your brains and flay them out across a slice of toast that he's going to feed to a rabid pack of adorable children. There's really no coherent response I can make to that, so I'm just going to pretend it never happened. Next caller, you're on the Maggot Show. Um, yeah, this is Ratchet Mang from a phallus. And I was going to ask you about your thoughts on the Galactic Senate initiative declaring gayness to be a war crime, but now I'm curious. Do you guys actually have pizza places that serve human flesh? Yeah, it's how Vega deals with cannibal fetishists. This way everyone wins. You guys are screwed up. Yeah, we get that a lot. Next caller. Yeah, I noticed... Is Frugal in there with you? I haven't heard him say anything. Yeah, he's here, but he's being silent in protest. He tried a hunger strike earlier today, but that only lasted as long as it took me to bake a cake shaped like a naked woman holding a Bible. So now he's trying the silent treatment. Again, I figure, this way, everyone wins. Except me. Okay, everyone I care about wins. And I guess this ends your vow of silence. So, how long did I stay quiet? Um, looks like it was about two hours. Really? That's not too bad. Yeah, I notice you're taking this new failure in stride pretty well. Yeah, well, I'm starting to see your point about me, you know, being a slave to my impulses. Not even a slave, really, so much as a fanatical devotee. A rare moment of clarity. 
Yeah, I get those when I've been drinking. And I've been drinking a lot lately. I was trying to make my heart stop, but apparently I pass out before I can drink that much. I've gained a new appreciation for your frustrations in being unable to kill me. I never knew how obnoxiously hard it was until I tried to do it myself. And thus, the tendency to orgasm violently at the sound of scripture slowly led Frugal on the path to wisdom. I'm pretty sure this isn't how God prefers to teach people. Yes, but I'm not God. You know, I was certain I'd see the seas boil and Satan wear a pink frilly dress before I ever heard you say that. Yet the seas of Erosia boiled under orbital bombardment last year after they sent you a chain letter, and Satan wore a pink frilly dress to the company Halloween party. So it seems as though the apocalypse is pretty much nigh. Either that, or your views as to the way the universe works were just dumb. I think I'll respond to that by vomiting the alcohol-soaked contents of my stomach onto your pants. <laughs> well, I suppose that's only fair. Well, loyal listeners, I'm afraid I'll have to cease this transmission before this stuff eats its way into my central nervous system, so that's it for the MAGA show this week. Tune in next time, or I'll describe to you what this stuff smells like. Ta!